Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back with Project VTOL in Phase 2. We have took the information we have learned from the bold sacrifice of those many Kermans and rolled it into this new improved VTOL aircraft. Yes, no space in this one yet again, but I promise you that we will see, see, we will see a successful launch and landing. So what we've done is we've took the main fuel tanks that used to make the fuselage and we've instead of running them in line we've took one in the middle and strapped two in the sides now by doing that we've managed to raise up the mounting points of our vertical ones and uh, that means they have more ground clearance because if you remember the thing that was most likely to get damaged during my terrible landing attempts was the vertical engines uh, so by moving them further off the ground we're probably going to make them safer from the terrors of a uh, ground impact so hopefully that'll help. Also, oh yeah, if you look there on the, the right-hand side, there's a little black dot on the ground just coming out underneath the wing. That is a, a that is something you should visit if you're around Ker Kerbal Space Center. I'm not going to reveal what it is up close, but you should, you should uh, go out there, take a look. It's the easiest uh, anomaly to find in the game. So anyway, yeah. The previous design used all the fuel tanks for the main engine. They were all in line uh, along the main fuselage. And I realized in retrospect that that was a really stupid thing to do because what would happen is the main engine would burn fuel from these sequentially. And that would mean that as time went on, the front of the vehicle would become lighter. And the V2, balancing the thing on the V2L with a fuel, full fuel load was pretty darn hard so if you can imagine what would happen if we had all the weight shifted to the back it would become impossible to fly in vertical mode and we would basically have a vertical takeoff and a spinny crashy thing when we tried to land it so by shifting all the fuel load into the middle we've managed to control that particular issue so yeah we've turned out over the water and we're just flying around testing this out i think we can probably uh, try try a test slow down here over the land in a minute. It does seem to fly particularly nicely. Uh, of course, I'm just poking buttons and letting mechanical Jeb do it. So there we go. Cutting the power here. We're deactivating the turbojet. We're seeing that we're uh, losing all our we're losing all our forward velocity because our nose is up. So now dip the nose down a little in a moment when we get our velocity slow enough. So you see, we've basically slowed down in flight. Say we wanted to get a better look at something on the ground, such as, uh, you know, an anomalous object or part of the scenery, huh? We can lower the landing gear as if we're going to land, but uh, let's, uh, let's not do that. Let's continue on our way so we fire up the main engine bring it back up to speed we're gonna go a long way out this time because you know that's the way i rock i guess there we go we deactivated the vertical engines and we are now flying on wing power alone although we're losing height slightly just wait for us to pick up speed again not the most sprightly of vehicles here I feel that I might want to mess around with this and, and use two turbojets on it instead if we were to take it to lathe. That would free up, you know, we could put two side pods on for the turbojets. And that way it would leave a single uh, point on the back that we could mount the rest of the rocket onto if we wanted to fly this thing to lathe. I think that would be the best idea. If we're going to try VTOLs on Duna, be aware that the regular jet engines will not cut it. They will not provide any thrust because the air is too thin. Turbojets will probably be fine, although they will be operating, operating at the extreme limits of their performance. So yeah, we just uh, as you see, we've uh, accelerated out here. We've flown out for a few minutes and I'm trying to take it in low. We are going to try and land this on the ground and, well, hopefully this will work because... Um, it is a really darn tedious thing to do with the with the response time on the jet engines being so slow. I find that landing is a an exercise in frustration and absolute patience. You know, you cannot do it too carefully. 
and controlling the horizontal speed also becomes a hard thing. Mechanical Jeb is pretty good at controlling my um, yaw and pitch, but it'll let my roll drift off axis and you'll see that as I start to come down, the velocity vector will shift to the left or the right and I have to adjust that by rolling a little and again, that is a manual thing which I am doing. I know Mechanical Jeb is not set up for VTOL aircraft. I'm sure it's another button we could add to it if, uh, <laughs> if so inclined, but honestly, I think the demand is rather limited. After all, there's only a couple of planets where this actually makes sense. So yeah, we're, we're moving around 20 meters per second. This is more going to be a slow touchdown landing rather than a vertical, but that's okay. It's going to be a rolling landing. We can test this out. Here we go, get nice and low, and there we go. Look, a landing where we didn't break anything. That is a VTOL first, or at least at this distance from the space center. Now, just be careful not to nosedive into the ground as I hit the brakes, and that is a successful landing. How about that? That is, that is a far better vehicle, and... Um, we also have a bit more fuel on board than, the, than the, compared to the previous one. But yeah, let's uh, get ourselves set up to do a return. Now again, we're going to take the vertical landing route. Ready. Power up. I can just you can see the weight shift as the engines come on, but not f powerful enough to actually lift. There we go. Wheels clear. And again, we're sliding backwards, and we want to fix that quickly because if you slide backwards, you can lose control of this very easily. So I'm just going to tell it to yaw around and point towards Kerbal Space Center. I mean, we basically flew it in this vector, and we'll fly back the way we're going. So we're turning north, now we're turning to 90. And I'm, again, the only thing I'm really controlling here is the yaw and the thrust. You see a little bit of rolling issue there. Well, not the yaw, the, the roll and the, um, the thrust. And, yeah, the roll's kind of annoying because you need to poke around at that. Uh, yes, just a little off. Come on, get yourself back. So I'm firing up the turbojet. Get myself going. Still only a 70 meters up, but I am confident that if I stow the landing gear, I will not have any accidental plane ground interactions. There we go. 60 meters per second. 70. We're probably ready to deactivate this in a moment. There we go. Nice. There we go. Okay. Okay, we are now flying like a plane and we are actually gaining vertical velocity. So time to time accelerate all the way back to Kerbal Space Center. It is a few miles to go. Uh, this is not the fastest aircraft, as I said previously, but then again, vertical takeoff aircraft have not been the fastest aircraft. The F-35 will in theory do Mach 1.6, but uh, we haven't seen many of those that uh, aren't having problems or aren't out of development, basically. And the program does seem to be in even more trouble. The government has basically said they're not sure they're going to bail it out again. Um, and that's supposed to be the cheaper one. The F-22 was the expensive one. It's really hard to justify, you know, modern aircraft when you, you realize how effective drones are these days. I mean, yeah, you can train a pilot how to fly an aircraft and stick him in it, or uh, you can give uh, some grunt an Xbox controller and let him fly a drone. I'm, of course, joking. Uh, you know, it's very serious business. Let us not jest. Saw the Blue Angels uh, during Flu Fleet Week um, a week ago. They were awesome, of course. San Francisco is one of those cities which, of course, we... Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, anti-war people, but at the same time, we all love watching planes fly around. Or at least most of us do. I don't know. It's a conflicted thing, let's say. So yeah, let's see if I can land this thing. We're going to try and get it over the runway. Uh, we want to be as low as possible before we start firing up those vertical engines. As you know, they have a, they have a much smaller fuel supply. And it'd be better to actually take advantage of it. There we go. 
So now we're going to kind of slide in over the runway. I'm going to try and put it down as close to my original launch point as possible. And, you know, unlike unlike my uh, landing from space, I can't really use mechanical jab to, to do the landing. I've got to do this manually. And it will be... Oh, it is going to be hard. So yeah, you see me controlling the yaw here to uh, slide myself over the runway rather than steering. I'm just using the yaw to to make my velocity vector go sideways. I am actually get I've been gaining height, but I really want to lose height because well, down is where the ground is. Just remember, if you wonder where the if you're ever trying to land, the ground is down, but not always the best way to go. Um, so yeah, vertical velocity is dropping to two meters, uh, dropping to minus two, minus three. So we're thrusting a little lower than we need to. And we've got to be careful because we need to bring that back in check. Again, I'm still sliding forwards. Now that I have mechanical jab, I actually have a readout of my horizontal speed, which is very important. Oh, yes, and we also have a shadow. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm picking up horizontal speed again. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I need to come, somehow kill that. I want to land as slowly as possible so that I can actually pretend that this really is a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. That's pretty good. Um, uh oh, no, I'm starting to slide backwards, which means I'm starting to wobble. Um, okay, uh, got to deal with this, got to deal with this. Get forwards, get forwards, get forwards. Ugh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, dear, 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 dear. I can't kill his backwards speed. Okay, I'm going to fire up the main engine again. Oh, because it would really suck to lose this. After all that brilliant flying. Okay, just needed enough to stop me flying forwards. Now turn it off again. Oh, okay, now i got to kill my forward velocity again. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I'm sweating. Seriously, this is some major hard work here. <laughs> uh, runway, runway, shadow, shadow. Vertical speed is too high. I'm going upwards rather than downwards. And the shadow is mysteriously disappearing around my dial. I'm not sure what is up with that. There we go. Got my horizontal speed down to a couple of meters per second. That's that's almost not horizontal. Uh, just a little. Just keep it going. So vertical velocity is about one meter per second, one point six. Just want to keep it in that region. I'd like my velo horizontal velocity is rising, but honestly, I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm going sideways faster than I am down. That is starting to border on horizontal takeoff and landing. But look at that. It is it is kind of beautiful. It's practically right on the center line. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm a terrible pilot. That's really what it tells us. But this thing will work. I will have to take it somewhere more exotic. Or perhaps I'll just get back to flying rockets again. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. You guys fly safe.